Um, the question, of course, is before we start, what is OpenStreetMap? And if you were to visit the website, then you will see, well, pretty much a map. And I'm gonna admit, the map is quite boring. Of course, on the website, there's also very uh, classical features, such as road planning here to go from A to B. Uh, but yeah, the website, it, it doesn't really show what OpenStreetMap is capable of. So, what is it more than just um, the map? It is in the first place and the foremost place a geospatial database. Uh, it's a database filled with points and lines. Um, and with the lines built, uh, on each of them, there is some extra information um, which indicates what every line and every dot is. So, um, that is another aspect of OpenStreetMap. Furthermore, uh, all this data can be reused. That's also a very important aspect of uh, OpenStreetMap, together with the freedom to add data. So everyone can add whatever they want as long as it's verifiable on the ground, it's somewhat permanent and if you add something that you don't copy it from a copyrighted source such as Google Maps or any other map out there. Why is that so awesome? Because if you have, if you can add something, you can go add whatever is important to you. Um, and that means that people crowdsourced exactly what they needed. It started, of course, with streets and with points of interest. People added cycle roads. People added surfaces. I'm from Bruges. People from Bruges might know that there's like a lot of cobblestone out there. So I went on and I mapped where all that cobblestone is in order to make a road planner avoiding the cobblestone. People went skiing and they added ski slopes. People added historical data. People added data on boys and on sea roads and took OpenStreetMap into the sea. People added high voltage lines and power infrastructure. So there is a whole trough of data in OpenStreetMap. Uh, also, um, it's not also limited to OpenStreetMap and to streets. People also started to make links with Wikidata and with Wikipedia. And this is a very cool project. Someone linked all the streets in Kent with Wikidata and they... and then if you query Wikidata you can know which gender a street is named after. And here for Ghent you see that it's mainly named after male people. The same exercise was done for Brussels, it's called Equal Street Name Brussels. One of the results was that the Leopold II tunnel will be renamed. Um, but it's not also in Belgium. People added their specific needs, but what if your specific needs are, for example, centered in Africa? Because you're uh, from Médecins Sans Frontières, or at uh, the Red Cross. People need maps there as well. If you want to go to vaccinate people, if you want to go uh, drill water wells, if you want to go help people, you need to, need, you need to know where these people are and how you can reach them. And for that, uh, Médecins Sans Frontières uses OpenStreetMap too. They even ask us in Belgium and all over the world to spend a few hours after our computers and to map uh, regions they are active in using satellite view. There is an annual mapathon where we come together and with 
around 100 people we map for a few hours and by the end of the night mid saint frontier they have base maps which gets them started so what is OpenStreetMap? it is saving lives um, there is more to OpenStreetMap than that um, there is also the license the license of the open database license in short the license means that you can reuse OpenStreetMap for whatever you want. You can use um, OpenStreetMap for an app for commercial usage, for non-commercial usage. There's only two restrictions. You need to give attribution. You need to state in some corner of the map or on, on a printed map somewhere that the data is originally from OpenStreetMap and you need to keep the data open. If you make an improvement to OpenStreetMap data, or if you mix it with other data, you have to you have to make sure that these improvements are open as well and are under the Open Database license as well. Now, this freedom in reuse of the data it's great and it spawned a lot of applications and a lot of websites. So. On your phone you have uh, several navigation applications, one of them is Osmond, another one is Maps.me. Uh, you can include OpenStreetMap on your website, there is a small JavaScript library, Leaflet for that, where you can make like maps with interactive pop-ups and interactive elements. There are people who made 3D viewers, so this is a view of Bruges, where the rendering is done in three dimensions. This is the same rendering in Kent. There are people who make uh, real like play mats for like kids and print OpenStreetMap on mats. There is also Pokemon Go which is a very um, which uses OpenStreetMap very heavily since a few years. Facebook Maps is also based on OpenStreetMap um, even uh, even VRT, the National News Agency, uses OpenStreetMap heavily, and that sometimes even sparks some controversy. In this case, because there's some ambiguous border map in Israel, and yeah, there was some uh, there was some there was something to do about it. Now, it's not only it's not only about maps. OpenStreetMap can also be used for scientific research. I personally find this a very interesting research paper. Here it is um, here's someone did research on how space was allocated in cities versus how people actually move. So for example here in Copenhagen people take mainly the bicycle because this little dot is close to the bicycle and they take public transport a lot as well but if we're gonna look how the public space is allocated then you see that a lot of the public space is spent on car infrastructure roads, parking spaces, overpasses quite so, some infrastructure is spent on cycle infrastructure and some of the public space is spent on public transport in Los Angeles, you see that nearly all the infrastructure is onto cars and people do not take the bike at all, but they do take public transport a little bit. So this is research that is made possible by OpenStreetMap. So yeah, OpenStreetMap has plenty, plenty, plenty of uses. It's really awesome. You cannot know all the uses because there are so many. Of course, it's a map, so you can also print it on paper. I have a few printed maps in my room. Um, and closer to Brussels and to Belgium, we also have Tragewegen VZW. They made a little booklet with all the car-free and uh, with all the car-free roads in Brussels. So there too you have another use of OpenStreetMap. Uh, for the people from West Flanders, 
there is Westur. They make the very well-known cycle node network maps. They too swapped over to OpenStreetMap for the base maps. Why? Because there is so much information in it. They reuse information about nature reserves, about benches, about basements, and that ends up on their maps. They even edit OpenStreetMap to add those benches for their own maps with the benefit that all the others can reuse their hard work. So, what is OpenStreetMap, if you'd ask me? It is pretty damn cool. So, um, there are also a few things that OpenStreetMap is not. Um, and for that, I would like to ask you in the chat, what was the last time you used a map? Why did you use it? And how much did you pay to use it? So put it in the chat. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a little while because there is some delay on the live stream. So let it come up into the chat. Go go go. I see twenty people in the chat. Ah, people are typing. Um, so, really use it for yourself, as a consumer. Answers are coming in. Uh, I see someone who used Google Maps and it was free, they didn't pay anything for it. I see that Jan used Apple Maps, which I think is free as well. Ah, more answers are coming in. The delay on the live stream is quite a bit. Another one using Google Maps. And while we're typing, the next question is, does someone know how much Google spends on Google Maps per year? Is it like $10,000 a year, $100,000, half a million? How much do you think that Google invests in Google Maps annually? Answers yet, but they'll probably be coming soon. All right, the first bit is 50 million, then someone says a few million, a couple of million as well. All right, 10 million, no ID, someone who's offering more. So keep in mind, this is a global database which spans all of the world. And um, there are no right answers, sorry guys. Um, it is one billion dollar a year. Yes, one billion dollar. So um, the m I have to admit, I didn't find any sources on that, it's a rumor. It could be more, it could be less, um, but a global database, yeah, it costs a lot of money. There are a few numbers that we do know of, so um, Google Street View costs around $200 up till $1,200 per kilometer. And Waze was being bought for $1 billion a few years back. So mapping is pretty big business after all. And then again, um, how much did you guys 
pay again to use Google Maps earlier on. Um, so yeah, there is no such thing as free lunch, of course. The question, of course, is how does Google Maps make money? The first thing, of course, is if you go to Google Maps, yeah, why are these pins showing up more prominently? And why isn't it showing, for example, the train station or the central marketplace, which are important markets for people? Well, of course, these pins are paid for. The owners of these, uh, of these venues paid Google to have their pin shown more prominently. Google Maps is basically advertising. Google makes money by placing these ads on the map. It's the replacement of the yellow pages, the book on the background, if people still know what this is. Um, of course, Google Maps also gets a lot of information on tracking. Every time you open Google Maps, it sends a ping to Google with this user is here. Services are such as share location, find my phone, are a great way to gather geolocation. And geolocation is also a very, very valuable source of a person's habits and how to better advertise to them. Now, of course, that's it's useful and it can be used for good things, but also if we're seeing the Black Lives Matter protests or other protests, it also means that Google knows who is on those protests and who is not. Anyway, um, Google Maps is also a bit of a monopoly. Luckily, that's uh, breaking uh, the last few months and years, but there is little incentive for other cartography services to print maps still. So, yeah, not to mention that there is quite some login. Um, now, OpenStreetMap is catching up. Um, luckily, Google Maps still has some more information about uh, venues and shops, but OpenStreetMap is catching up rapidly. So, if you have a look, um, this is a comparison. OpenStreetMap started in 2005. In 2007, it was still yeah, a, a, a very incomplete map, at least in Belgium. But then, 10 years later, you see that there is a huge, huge, huge improvement. Most of the streets are there in 2017. Now we're working on adding buildings and all the other information. For cycle infrastructure, OpenStreetMap cannot be beaten. Um, so, if you have to come back to the question, what is OpenStreetMap? OpenStreetMap is truly free. It is free as in freedom. It's also free as in beer, but uh, it's, yeah, to the server costs are not... Uh, if, you, if you have a big project, you need to uh, gather some help from commercial services. Uh, but if you can, please donate back. Uh, contribute data, contribute love, contribute users, and maybe even a little money as a donation or by not um, straining the free servers by uh, using a commercial provider. So yeah, that's another aspect of OpenStreetMap. There is even more. OpenStreetMap is also the community. This is a picture of a few years back. Quite a few of these people are coaches. Uh, it's also a very old picture. I should update this soon. Uh, in Belgium, we do quite a few of projects to check for completion of OpenStreetMap. Also, we were very prepared for the municipality fusions in 2019. On OpenStreetMap, we had the new road names, we had the new municipality names when they merged. Um, we do the mapathons, we do OpenStreetMap code, we do a lot of stuff. Um, in non-corona times, we do physical meetups. We have a chat channel, uh, we have several projects, so come around and, uh, and, and get in touch. Oh, so yeah, um, and the most important thing of OpenStreetMap is, well, this. So, um, 
these are a few examples um, for lately it's like uh, municipalities are placing uh, public bicycle pumps but often the problem is where to find a bicycle pump and then uh, like for example municipality of uh, Forst they made a little Google My Maps thing and they placed it on their website and then Cyclo they also made a little Google My Maps and they copied all the cycle pump but then for the entirety of Brussels and then yet it has a little list and then Bruges also has cycle pumps and they have a list as well and um, here it is a little stupid because there are 20 different websites, none of them are complete and, and people don't find it because it's so fragmented. And this is where OpenStreetMap comes in. With Cyclofix we want to make one tool with all the bicycle pumps based on OpenStreetMap, the data goes to OpenStreetMap directly. So that means that all the cycle pumps are together on one map and they get spread out to all the all the apps using OpenStreetMap. I'm talking about maps.me, I'm talking about the Bike for Brussels Road Planner, I'm talking about all those specialistic tools which are very interested in all those bicycle pumps. And that is basically the spirit of OpenStreetMap. It's all working together on the most accurate, the most details, the most detailed and the most up-to-date global map of the world. And that's why I'm all crazy about OpenStreetMap. So, um, I also see in the live chat that there are uh, there's another number. If there are questions, um, ah, if there are questions, now is a good time to put it in the live chat. Uh, also, I see that there was a recent research where the total value of OpenStreetMap was valued onto one and a half billion dollars, which is pretty cool as well. So, any questions? I see people are typing. Can you talk about the relation with Mabox? Yeah, so Mabox is a third-party company and they have a paid service. So if, you're, if you need a map on your website, you can ask Mabox, hey, I need a map, can you do the hosting for the map? And then you pay them a little bit. No, there are plenty of services. There's MapTiler, there was MapSan. Uh, our coach, Jonathan, has a similar service. Some of them are free, some of them are paid. Even if they are paid, they are pretty democratic in their prices. Uh, and Mapbox also does a lot of mapping on OpenStreetMap. Alright, a second question. What is missing for getting the average user to switch to OpenStreetMap? It kind of depends on what you mean. Um, there is one thing, Google Maps is pre-installed on like every phone. It's there in the collective memory. And people know it, so that's why people by default use Google Maps. No, that being said, a lot of people are already using OpenStreetMap even if they don't realize it. It's just that it's packaged into, for example, Pokemon Go or it's packaged in SnapMap. Uh, and then there are a few maps which do road planning and navigation purely in OpenStreetMap, where that is the main thing, I'm mainly Maps.me and Osmond. And I have to admit that there, um, right now, some of these apps either like features or they are somewhat hard to use. Osmond has too many options, but it's a great app. So that's why adoption is a bit slow. Now, that will change, definitely, uh, as better tools come available. And OpenStreetMap has a huge momentum right now and more and more people are switching to OpenStreetMap especially in the business world more and more people are using OpenStreetMap are contributing back to it so it's uh, taking over OpenStreetMap really is winning so uh, so yeah 
and as a Google Maps only mobile basic walking directions yeah also Google Maps is very very car oriented and for that Google Maps has good car instructions but for cycling and for walking it's horrible it's uh, I've once did um, I once asked instructions in Bruges to go from where I live to the station it's like two kilometer and I already spotted three or four mapping mistakes like one ways for cars but not one ways for cyclists where this giving me detours uh, sending me over a patch where cycling is not allowed really stuff like that anyway um, if I see one last question coming up uh, and then I'm gonna continue with the talk where I talk about how OpenStreetMap works and what the data model is because we're developers after all so it can get a little more technical alright no more questions let's continue so contributing to OpenStreetMap um, yeah so first of all if you want to add data to OpenStreetMap there are a few rules uh, of course there's the database if you add data to OpenStreetMap you donate the data to OpenStreetMap and you agree to the fact that the data can be reused under the ODBL with attribution and that it should stay open um, if you add stuff you're only allowed to add stuff that's verifiable on the ground so if you go out and you see something you can add it if you can measure it it can be verified by other people and this makes sure that there's no uh, subjective data and it's harder for flame wars to start that's also the reason that we do not have reviews because reviews yeah they need moderation they attract conflict and that's something that we don't do second you're not allowed to copy from other maps due to copyright so for example do not copy from google maps do not copy from a city map of course you can ask permission if your municipality they make a little map of bicycle pumps or they make a little map of toilets or whatever ask them and ask if you can copy and if they say oh yeah go on copy it in OpenStreetMap the more copies the merrier then go on but you should ask that beforehand and third don't be afraid use your common sense if you think you see a mistake fix it if you make a mistake that's no big deal we're not gonna eat you we're gonna send you a friendly message with like hey you made this edit and maybe you meant this and it should be mapped like that also don't be afraid to ask help we're at Olsok we have coach Jonathan we have coach Ben we have me there's plenty of uh, experience around also after Olsok we have the chat channel we have mailing list reach out uh, we're a friendly bunch so that being said let's have a look to the OpenStreetMap infrastructure so we have one big central database with OpenStreetMap um, it's this database where all the small changes end up so contributors make changes there and the changes get pulled by various apps so the first app of course is the base map on openstreetmap.org itself there's also osmond.me, overpass, research, wikipedia, pokemon go so they update whenever they feel like so in other words it's pretty normal if you do an update it should be visible on OpenStreetMap within a few minutes sometimes it breaks and sometimes it takes a few hours before it's visible on the map and then other applications they just update when they feel like so if you make an update and you don't see it popping up immediately on your favorite app don't worry about that no as mentioned earlier it's one big geospatial database geospatial data that's basically lines and dots and some extra information on what a line is what a dot represents um, so I'm gonna switch to some live editing of course you need to sign up for an account if you want to make edits 
using the data can be done anonymously, but editing, we like to know who is editing that, what. Now, if you click edit, you're going to drop down onto the editor, which takes a little while to load. Yeah, there we go. So we have a blank canvas here. And if you want to add some data, for example, there is a tree over here. You can click point and then you see and then you can say there is some interesting point here such as a tree and then you can say oh there is a tree there now in the background there's more information you can add about the tree for example you can add the diameter of the tree and um, i didn't go out to measure it but Let's say it's 0 0.4 meters. Um, you can also link the species. And in this case, it's even a link to um, Wikidata. So you can do all this kind of stuff. Now, here you have some predefined fields you can fill in. You don't have to fill them in if you don't know about them. But in the background, the, all the data is saved like this. It's like a dictionary which has um, natural equals tree. So this says, this says that this is a tree. It says diameter equals 40 centimeter. So these tags, we call them, are attached to every point and to every... Um, to every line and it's even cooler so I see it's really cool that you can add all, all that specific info it's even cooler because this is completely freeform so if you want to survey for a specific thing uh, you can just invent your own tag now inventing your own tag is something that should be done in cooperation but for example uh, if you want to add a reference number, you can like add a reference. Or if you want to do something very specific, I can't come up with something that hasn't been documented before, you can invent something that you need. Now, sometimes it's pretty hard to uh, know, oh, I should use species, double point Wikidata, and not Wikidata, double point species. So, where can you find how to describe something? For that, we have the wiki. So, on wiki.openstreetmap.org, we have like all the information about everything and how <laughs> it is documented. Yeah, so I see in the stream chat, if you want, you can indeed go and count the leaves and you can add a leaf count. But I don't think anyone is as crazy to do that. Anyway, so in the wiki we have documentation on like nearly everything. There is a huge page map features. I'm gonna see... Uh, yeah, this is a huge list that was just uh, indexed. And you can see that pretty much everything can be added to OpenStreetMap for pretty much everything there is documentation uh, there are plenty of features you can add there are plenty of extra attributes to ask for it's really crazy how much information that is in there so for example um, I'm gonna search oh there's one missing um, so, for example, if we search for a supermarket, yeah, a supermarket, but you can see that for a supermarket, you can add stuff like opening hours, wheelchair accessibility, is it organic, phone number, bulk purchases, branch, fair trade, ways we can pay, a link to, an op to a Wikidata of operator, uh, you have no idea how much 
there is possible. Um, so um, you have all the tags for ways it's a bit the same so for example there's a little ditch here so then you click line and then you can add like this a piece of ditch so I'm gonna name it a ditch you see that there is a tag waterway ditch this is applied to the entire line you can also have you can also select a single point out of it and you can add like a point on that line that can be useful uh, if I go to for example a street is there a street nearby so we have here the street and then for example you can here add a speed bump if you're gonna do road planning then a road planner knows ah, I'm following here along over a road and here I do have a speed bump so I have to calculate in that we're gonna have a few we're gonna have a small slowdown um, so yeah so anyway um, for surfaces it's pretty much the same for example if you want to add a building or a piece of metal or a piece of water for example here is a very cool piece of water you click area and then you can like add like this and then you can say oh this is a piece of water so this way you can add data to open street map um, so the last thing you have to do is you have to save things so this is all locally and then you can you have to ask a few you have to write a small message such as it's basically a commit message which explains what you did this all goes in the history so if something weird happens we can use that commit message that changed that comment to see what someone meant to do and correct that person or uh, get them on the right track so added three ditch and water all right so i'm uploading this to openstreetmap and then if i click here back on the map you'll see that it's not yet visible but if i refresh the page a few times it should show up within a few minutes so I'll be checking back in a minute uh, in the meantime I saw a question in the stream chat how do we get the satellite and the aerial imagery um, we get it donated basically so for Flanders the Agentschap Informatie Vlaanderen they fly over Flanders with little airplanes um, and those airplanes take pictures of everything and then Flanders publishes that as open data um, we also have some partnerships with some satellite providers where we can use their satellite imagery worldwide so that's how we get uh, aerial imagery it's even quite funny if you click you can switch layers also by the way oh, the editor really takes a long time so here you have the background settings so here I took the Agentschap Informatie Vlaanderen most recent aerial imagery uh, the Dutch people from the Netherlands they also inventorize the, the Netherlands but they also fly over for a few kilometers and onto Flanders so we have some imagery sponsored by the, the Netherlands government we have Bing aerial imagery we have Esri and also we have imagery which is five six years old which is which is for a very, of a very high quality from Flanders here so uh, so yeah we have plenty of aerial imagery sources it wasn't like that ten years ago or at least that's what they told me but for example Ben, Joost and Jonathan they started out with like tracking with GPS's with, on their phone and then using these tracks and notes they made like this is this street and this is this street to get OpenStreetMap started which is pretty awesome if you ask me um, so um,
um, that's about editing and a small crash course on the data set of OpenStreetMap. Hey, how can I exit this thing? Come on. Um, no. Um, this can be closed. Uh, there are a few um, other really cool things one can do with OpenStreetMap. So I've just shown that every feature has these tags. Um, now, of course, it's very useful to um, be able to query OpenStreetMap data. It's very useful to ask for specific things. And for that, we have a little website. It's called Overpass Turbo. And on Overpass Turbo, one can ask for stuff. If there are um, things people want to search for in a, cer in a certain location, please write in, in the chat. I'm going to start with something very simple. For example, where are all the benches I can sit on in Bruges? If you want to search for other things in other places, please let me know. So you can see we have a lot of benches. Uh, there is also more stuff. For example, one can ask for all the uh, streets. Um, build and run query. Ah, graffitis. Graffitis is a very interesting one. I don't know if they are mapped already, but we can do that. But um, I'm going to ask in Brussels for artwork. Tourism equals artwork. Build and run query. So there we go. We've got quite some artwork. Um, we have artwork type mural here, which is a bit close. A sculpture. Um, I'm gonna tie artwork type equals graffiti and let's see what turns up. So we're searching for artwork and artwork type equals graffiti. I'm, I'm also gonna peek how it's written exactly. I'm sure someone already mapped it somewhere. Um, maybe on artwork. So, there is an artwork, uh, there is an artwork type, let's have a look there. Mural, architecture, painting, sculpture, statue, best stone. Here, graffiti. This is what we are searching for. Build and run query. And yeah, we have one in Brussels here. So, a lot of them are probably still missing, but if you want to, you can add them. So, there is a lot possible with that. Now, if you need certain geodata for your project, be it stuff like this, uh, for Cyclofix we are being using um, amenity compressed air and, and bicycle equals yes or, or amenity bicycle repair station. So for Cyclofix team, or for people with bicycle thing, we can ask for bicycle pumps and bicycle repair stations and related stuff. Another very cool one, also bicycle related, is like cycle streets, recyclable or fietsstraten, um, which there are in Brussels also plenty of. So you can see that there's quite a few. So there's a lot of data. If you need something, have a look on the wiki or ask us. So that's something that I definitely wanted to show. You can also use Overpass as an API in your application. You can use it to extract GeoJSON to do analysis on runs. Or you can query it a few times to, for example, to make a live website. And that is exactly what we are doing with Cyclofix. So with Cyclofix, we are making a little tool. 
so this is also OpenStreetMap. A little tool where we ask for bicycle pumps and bicycle stands. Okay, that's a lot of bicycle stands and we definitely have to create a new icon for that. So if I go to Yette, uh, then... No, oh, oh, there are already images there. No, that's... Uh, oh, 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 oh. I'm a bit lost. Uh, where is a bicycle pump? Yeah, this. Yeah, so here we have a bicycle pump. This is a little tool we're building for Cyclofix and there we ask people to add images of the bicycle pumps and to answer some questions about the bicycle pump and about the things. Uh, yeah, I see hunting down things to add to the OSM database sounds like a better game than playing Pokemon Go. It is indeed a lot of fun and there are plenty of tools to do that. So I'm gonna... Um, bicycle pumps are a fun one but it can be like everything and anything that you want. Um, now, I'm sidetracking a little bit. I'm gonna go back to um, my slideshow. Come on, Firefox, go away. Yeah, there we go. So, um, this I all mentioned. Hang on, I'm gonna put it here so that you don't have to see the ugly switching. Um, so, there is a lot of tools available. Um, there is the map complete tool. If you want for your project to let people search for a certain kind of geodata, let us know and we'll help you to build a custom version of Cyclofix or Buurt Natuur or however you want to call it. Now, that being said, I still wanted to mention a lot of tools that you can use while making your project. So, and this is part three of the presentation. Hang on. Yeah. Um, namely the OSM tools. So, um, again, OSM is a big ecosystem. It's diverse. There are thousands of tools, it's constantly changing, projects die, projects pop up, uh, projects bloom, and whether it's hard to know every tool, it's hard to keep track of everything, that's alright. Um, there is a community around it, ask us, and we'll certainly find something to point you in the right direction. Um, and I want to already start with giving a few pointers. So. If you want to make a quick map, like Google My Maps, for example, you want to prepare an event, you want to prepare, you want to prepare an outing with the family, you want to highlight a few things that you want to visit, but they aren't really relevant for other people, there is UMAP. Um, and yeah, you can add stuff there. It's fun to play with, uh, but that's just a side note. Furthermore, I think most of the people will be interested in having a little map on their website. Now, to have such a little map on your website, um, first we're, I'm going to talk a little bit about the technology to do this. Who does know this game and, and knows how to play it? So, not a lot of answers. Yeah, so I see one person who knows the game. So, this is a uh, board game, and people basically play it. It's indeed called Carcassonne. Um, and uh, you play turn by turn, and one grabs one little tile out of a bag, and then you puzzle the tile on one of the edges of the playing board. And this way a map grows and it's you have to make sure when you add a tile that it neatly aligns so that a road doesn't end in a meadow for example. Well basically having a web map on your website works a little bit the same. So if you want a 
map on your website you have a little library and that library asks OpenStreetMap or some other tile provider for little images and for example there are these are three of these images uh, these are also of these images and the browser then downloads the images only the images that it needs and lines them next to each other so that it looks like you have one continuous map this is called a WMS, a, a web mapping service, or a TMS, a tile mapping service. Now, of course, hosting these tiles that consume some bandwidth, you have to construct them. Uh, I think that all the tiles in OpenStreetMap for the entire world, they take around one or two terabytes of disk data, so it's not really cheap to use them. For a hobby project, it's allowed to use the OpenStreetMap service, but as soon as you have a bigger project which has um, like thousands and thousands of daily visitors it is asked to switch over to a, a commercial tile provider um, so uh, what's the advantage of such a slippy map as it's called there's one server which has everything it's quite lightweight of the for the client it's simple for the client, but it's pretty static, and uh, yeah, you have one central point of failure. Um, another ad disadvantage is that by downloading the tiles, you say to the big tile provider, hey, someone here is interested in these tiles. So you lead some data to the central server, and also you need internet to have it working. Um, so... Yeah, I already mentioned there are several such tile providers. Uh, some have fancy tiles, some have other styles, some are expensive, some are cheap. Um, so you can mix and match whatever you want. Another very well-known tile provider is Google, with their Google Maps things, but let's not mention them. Um, now, to get started with that, there are two big or two big uh, and user-friendly ways to do that. There's leaflet.leaflet.js.com. It's a small and friendly JavaScript library. They have excellent documentation, uh, so you can do stuff like this with them. They are pretty awesome. I always tend to use them uh, for small projects. There's also Mabox GL. Mabox GL is a bit beefier. Uh, they also send over tiles, but instead of sending over like images, they send over a vector format. It's like using JPEGs and PNGs versus using scalable vector graphics. Uh, they have more possibilities. For example, you can make maps which are more interactive and, and more performant. But I have to be very honest, and I'm a bit ashamed to say it, I'm not very handy with them. I've used Leaflet more. However, Coach Ben has a ton of experience with Mapbox GL, so if you want to use it, you can ask him, and I should definitely do that one time soon. Um, as I already mentioned, if you need specific data, you can ask Overpass. Yeah, so that was for the Mapbox, for maps on your websites if you need specific data so train stations and your connections uh, you can use overpass um, it's really cool to uh, query the database you go to overpass turbo and then you can like ask um, uh, p -p 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 railway equals star and then you will get all the railways um, so I'm gonna live demo that again I've shown it earlier on so overpass turbo.eu and I'm gonna zoom out a little wizards railway equals star build and run query I hope I'm right Hang on, this is a heavy query. Yeah, 
Oh, I hope this is not gonna time out. Oh, it's timing out. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit more. Yeah, if the query is too big, it's gonna fail. Yeah, there we go. So, oh wait. Yeah, there we have all the railway related infrastructure. So, as you, as you can see, uh, there is a lot of information on railways, but uh, there are the level crossings, uh, and yeah, uh, there is no information about railway infrastructure and railway signalization yet, but I'm sure that one day some train conductor will get the, vi the open street map virus and it's gonna add all the lights and all the, the switches but there really is a lot of data on various topics in OpenStreetMap and yeah one of the big powers is that it's a big mess and it's a big melting pot of all the data on one big layer so it's all tightly integrated which makes it really 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 cool Again, you can use Overpass this website as API. So that means that if you want to make a website showing railways, you can easily ask Overpass, convert it to GeoJSON, and show it on your website. It's a very lightweight and a very uh, fast way to have an on-topic website. It's also what I do for the for the Cyclofix stuff. There's also other ways, there are also, um, there's also providers which make tiles, PNG tiles, with railways. And then it looks like this. So this is like open railway map. There's also an open infrastructure map. So for every geeky subject and every infrastructural thing, there is data on it on an open street map. So open infra map to switch to that one. Open InfraMap is the one showing like underwater cables, uh, high voltage cables, both underground and uh, overground. It's showing converter stations. There's the, These are the Toronto windmill banks in the sea. There's it's mind-blowing how much information there is <coughs> in OpenStreetMap. But anyway, I'm uh, sidetracking a little. So we have Overpass Turbo, where you can query data. Uh, also, I know a lot of people are using DuckDuckGo. There is handy banks on it, so you can use uh, exclamation mark wiki OpenStreetMap, wasn't for a certain feature and then you can use OTV overpass turbo wizard for having a certain feature and then you can really quickly ask for certain data bicycle parking it's really useful to get like an instant map in a few seconds bomb bicycle parkings anyway uh, another very useful thing there is the export button you can export as geojson uh, QGIS and other JIS programs are uh, keen on that format. You can download it as GPX, that's perfect to import in your favorite navigation application on your smartphone, such as Maps.me or Osmond or even Google Maps if you want certain features. Um, so we have MapContrib. Uh, which is useful for surveying, but we're making something better. Uh, there's also geocoding services. For example, I have an address, for example, uh, Archer Street or Kantersteen 12, but I want to know where it is geographically. Uh, there are services for that. OpenStreetMap does that for small things. Mapbox does that for bigger things. Map Tyler 2, I think. We have reverse geocoding uh, services, which is, I have a coordinate, what's the attached address, in which municipality is it, in, wh in which city is it. Uh, there's also Peter Kolpaert, who has very fancy uh, client-side geocoding and reverse geocoding. We have uh, 
Road Planners, um, my company anyways, where I'm working, has a road planner specifically for cyclists. There is third party road planners. Uh, Peter Colpart is making a, um, a a client side road planner called Planner.es, where you like download tiles of street information and then the road planning happens in the browser. That's also really, really cool. Um, if you need road planning. Uh, there's plenty of applications on your phone too. Um, so, in, such as uh, Osmond, which I al already mentioned, it can do a lot of stuff. There's maps.me. Uh, there's also Street Complete. Street Complete is a really fun one if you want to get started with editing information. Uh, basically, Street Complete um, asks if you walk around, it asks, hey, is this street lit? Is there a cycleway? What's the, the surface of the street? Uh, what's the opening hours of this shop? What does the shop sell? So, it's <laughs> like catching Pokemon, but then you're catching data for OpenStreetMap. Um, and then finally, there is one last tool. Uh, there is also a website called Map Osmetic where you can say, oh, I want this part of OpenStreetMap. I want it printed on a map. It will generate a PDF for you and then you can um, go to a print shop and you can um, have a map printed on paper. I did that a few times whenever I go on uh, a, a hiking holiday, I print one in big format and then I have a physical map. So, this is basically what I wanted to tell you guys. There's plenty of tools, there's plenty of cool stuff that you can do with OpenStreetMap. 